you know, when Owen first asked me to speak on motherhood, I was hesitant. Not because I didn't want to share with you, but because I have three very young children and I am in the midst of mothering. I don't have the wisdom that only time can bring. I'm in process. I'm in learning. Half the time I don't know what I'm doing. But while I don't have the years of perspective behind me, I do have the perspective from God's word. And as my mom so faithfully taught me, perspective is everything. I have found that to be true in all the hard moments of mothering when I have felt like I'm doing it all wrong or it's just been difficult. I have found the perspective from scripture to lift my soul and shift my perspective off of myself and onto Christ. And so in these few moments that follow, I want to share some of that with you. I am going to address four things that embracing a biblical perspective of motherhood brings. First, embracing motherhood brings gain to my children. Every woman sitting in this room has been profoundly shaped by a mother, either in a good way or in a damaging one. You have either been loved or neglected, or maybe a combination of the two. There's no denying it. The memories from our mothers run deep. A mother's love or lack of it can shape and define us for years. To this day, I can still hear the soft click of my mother's blue rocking chair when she rocked me as a child. I can smell her perfume and recall the feeling of comfort I felt safe in her embrace. And while my point in this short talk is not to exalt motherhood as some sort of idol, I do want us as women to feel the weight of it to know the power of it, and most of all, not to run away from it, but toward it. We can often be tempted to view children in two ways, either as burdens or as belongings. We can view them as burdens when we see them as getting in the way of things we may want to do, whether that is something as simple as a hobby or as time-consuming as a full-time career. We can also be tempted to view children as belongings, not intentionally, of course, but from the very beginning, of our pregnancy, we receive in the doctor's office a magazine geared toward making an environment for baby, decorating the perfect nursery, obtaining the newest baby gear, dressing your baby. Our children become cute little extensions of ourselves. And it's not that those things are necessarily bad. I have actually done all of those things. But they are shallow when that is all there is. The scripture gives a much richer portrait of children, like arrows, In the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Likewise, in scripture, we see the deepest brokenness in women when they cannot have children. Rachel and Hannah were both barren and pleaded with God for a child. Hannah, Samuel's mother, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, prayed two of the most theologically rich and poetic prayers in scripture after receiving the gift of a child. They saw motherhood as a great gift from God. But it was not just the physical act of having a child, though that is certainly a gift, but in in the opportunity to give those children back to the Lord. Hannah literally did this as she brought Samuel to serve in God's temple. And so we see that motherhood is not just about having babies or giving birth, but raising children for God's purposes. Motherhood is a weighty task, but it is only a burden when we do not view it from God's perspective. When I think about the great responsibility of motherhood, I am always reminded of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Her world was completely changed when God chose her to be the mother of Jesus. She was young. She didn't have it all together. She didn't have years of experience under her belt. And no one would understand her journey of motherhood. No one would know the sacrifice like she would. Motherhood does require sacrifice, but it isn't complicated. All it takes is willingness. Mary's words of embracing motherhood are an example to us today. Let it be to me according to your word. And that is my encouragement to the mothers today in this room. Don't believe the whispers from the world or your own heart that your children are just getting in the way of something better or that they would be better off being raised by a different mother. They are God's blessings to you. And God chose you to be your children's mom. He chose your voice to sing them songs, your imagination to tell them stories, and your way to teach them to fold laundry or bait a fishing hook. The little moments of your presence, these are the things they will remember. 
they don't want a perfect mom. They just want a mom who loves to be theirs. And when you love to be theirs, they are happy. When we embrace mothering because we love God and believe that God has called us to it, our children will have great gain. They will have a mother who loves them and doesn't see them as burdens or as belongings, but as gifts from God. And by God's grace, they will have gain not only in this life, but in the life to come. Secondly, embracing motherhood brings gain for my husband. We know from the book of Genesis that the woman was created to be her husband's helper. As women, we can often chafe at this word because it sounds less than or an inferior role, but it isn't. The Lord himself is, a, is described as a helper. Psalm 40, 17 says, you are my help and my deliverance. And Hebrews 13, 6 says, so we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. In Genesis 2, Adam was created out of dust in an uninhabited place, and Eve was created in a beautiful garden. But I find it so interesting that she wasn't made from rose petals or fairy dust, but solid bone. I love that. She is created from sturdy stuff. My mom used to always tell me, strong men need to marry strong women, and I totally believe that. Both my grandma and my great-grandma grew up in farms on, in South Carolina. They were and are tough women who could wield both needle and farm hoe, and they loved their men. They helped them and embraced their roles as mothers. I was the, at the hospital the day my great-grandma Maud died. My middle name is her namesake. Just a couple days before she died, my great-granddaddy looked into my eyes with tears streaming down his own and said, if you live half a good a life as this woman right here, you ha will have lived a good life. He loved her. Proverbs 31 describes a love like that. An excellent wife, who can find? She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. We bring great good to our husbands when we are willing to embrace the sacrifice of motherhood, when we endure when it is hard instead of complaining to our husbands, when we stop comparing ourselves to other moms or believing that we aren't good enough. Third, embracing motherhood brings gain to my soul. All the mothers in this room know that there isn't much allotment in motherhood for selfishness, at least if you want to be happy. Because if you are constantly seeking your own desires or viewing your children as distractions to something better, you will be unhappy. We are aware of the sacrifice motherhood brings. So how can we be joyful when it's just plain hard? I think this is where our view of motherhood is radically redefined by Christ in the cross. Because Jesus' call to his followers is clear. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. I believe this is true for mothers. We gain the most when we are willing to lose ourselves. Last year, I read a blog post a young woman had written about how she was afraid to become a mother because it might cause her to lose herself. As I read her post, I couldn't help but agree with her that motherhood has come at a great cost. Motherhood has caused me to lose sleep, lose tears, lose quiet time, me time. It has caused me to lose my patience, my temper, and my clean house. Now I understand why my mom used to eat ice cream in the bathroom with the door locked. <laughs> it is the biggest daily sacrifice I have ever made, hands down. And I realized it's true. Motherhood has caused me to lose myself. It is still me, of course, but I'm different too. It has changed me. But here's what I want you to hear and believe today. Losing yourself is not something to be feared because it is in the losing that something of worth is truly gained. Motherhood has cost me, but it hasn't robbed me. I have gained far more than I ever could have imagined. It has helped me turn from my selfishness and pursue what is good and true. It has shown me how insufficient I am and how much I need the Lord. It has caused me to pray about things I never thought I would pray about. I'm not enough, but he is. And I truly believe that until we are willing to embrace motherhood at its hardest, we will never know the fullest of its joys. Lastly, and most importantly, embracing motherhood brings gain for God's kingdom. When you are a mom of young children, 
It can be so easy to get wrapped up in all the doing. There are so many daily needs and demands that little people require of you that it can often be hard to see beyond the task at hand. But as moms who have been transformed by Christ, we must ask the Lord to help us see beyond the daily routines to the hearts of our children. Mothering isn't just doing, it is seeing. In Matthew chapter 19, wedged between Jesus' teaching on divorce and sharing the gospel with a rich young man is the account of Jesus blessing the little children. People were bringing children to Jesus that he might touch them. The disciples sized up the situation and they acted accordingly. These children were a distraction to Jesus' ministry and they promptly rebuked the people. Jesus, however, didn't see the situation that way. Instead, he was indignant at his, at his disciples for their actions and exclaimed, Let the little children come to me, for such belongs the kingdom of heaven. I know many of us know this story, but as moms, do we really know it? Jesus likens the kingdom of heaven to a child. When we pour our lives into our children, we are doing more than just getting through the routine of the day. And as Kevin DeYoung put it yesterday, if you want to care for the world, care for, our, care for children. If you want to care for the world, care for children. We are doing real ministry. Don't believe anything different. So let us embrace mothering because we love Jesus, and he said, this is kingdom work. Thank you. Now it's my privilege to introduce you to our next speaker. Mrs. Mary Moeller is the wife of Dr. Al Moeller, the president of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. She is a mother and a grandmother, as well as a woman's conference speaker and writer. And I will just tell you from personal experience, she has a heart for women, and I know you will be blessed by her today. So give her a warm welcome.